All right, so today I wanna to talk about an idea for a remoteless push assist electric skateboard. And the idea for this is to allow you to cut back on a bunch of excess weight, excess batteries, excess motors, so you can run a much lower power board that still is able to provide a lot of the benefits of an electric skateboard. So on your typical electric board, you've got your remote and it's got some sort of trigger to accelerate the board. And you get on the board and the board takes you up to speed. But the idea for a push assist board is that the acceleration is done by you, not by the motor. And you just push and the board just kind of maintains that speed. And you push a little faster and the board just keeps that up. So because of that, it means that you're the one that's doing the work to accelerate the board up to speed. And it also means that the board's not gonna be going nearly as fast. So it's a completely different use case from say the boosted board where I'm often going pretty quick. So how the board would work is it would have a couple of pressure sensitive areas underneath the grip tape. For now, let's just focus on one and two. There'd be three different modes of how the board would operate. There'd be coast, cruise, and brake. So, coasting is gonna be when you're setting the speed and the board is really just not doing anything at all. There's no motor drag and it's just following what you're doing. If the board is following your lead. And that's gonna be either pressure plate one or pressure plate two. So the idea is you are pushing, the board is just kind of following and listening and, and keeping track of what speed it's going at. So you've been pushing and you're getting the board up to speed and now you just want to cruise. So you put your foot down on the board and now you've got feet on both one and two. And this enters cruise mode. One and two. So in cruise mode, all it's going to do is to try to maintain the speed it was going at while it, when it entered cruise mode. So now it's just, I'm just chilling and the board is just maintaining its own speed. So next is brake. So what happens if I step off the board? The board automatically slows itself down and comes to a stop. So the brake is not one, not two, right? But brake also comes into play with the 1A and 1B because you don't want your only way of slowing down to be to either foot brake or to jump off the board. So I want another way to be able to slow down and that is what these are for. So the second option for slowing down is you have your foot on two and one B, but not one A. If you've got A and B, then it's just going to be A, right? So, <laughs> this is getting a little bit more confusing, but two and uh, one B, but not one A, right? So, so it's a pretty short list of conditions 
but I feel like it fits all the scenarios you might need for the speeds you might get yourself into. So a few other things. So cruise, the speed is set when it enters cruise. So if you're braking and then you enter cruise, that's the new speed it's going to maintain. Also with cruise, it's not just maintaining a minimum speed, it's trying to stay below that speed threshold as well. So if you're going to a comfortable speed and you've set your speed you want to do, and then you start going downhill, the cruise is going to try to slow you down and keep you at a controllable speed. However, because the motor is not sized for acceleration, neither is it well equipped for deceleration under force like downhill. So um, you're still going to have to probably rely on some w uh, ways of stopping yourself like foot braking or carving or getting off the board. One other small concern that might come up is with the braking. If this board is sized with a small battery and a small motor, not only might it not have the power to have a lot of braking force, but it might not have a lot of space to put that energy from when you were braking. So, you know, using regenerative braking, you can put it back into the battery. But if your battery is not huge, then it might need another way to bleed off some energy uh, without putting it into the battery. So that's another consideration. So my hope with this would be to end up with something that is relatively lightweight, relatively cheap, and something that is easy to take with you and bring on your person and take more places than a traditional electric skateboard like this. This thing is 18 pounds. This is a hard thing to lug around. Um, I can go up and ride to the grocery store, but I'm not going to be lugging this thing around the grocery store with me, but something more this size and, you know, if we can go down to like maybe half the weight, that's already a lot better. So this is a idea from a couple videos back, what was the open channel truck concept. And the idea with this was to have a motor can that's kind of part of the design of a truck. And they have a single motor driving two wheels. So you have two wheel drive, one motor, one uh, a, a single speed controller, not a dual speed controller, simpler parts. And the whole idea behind this design was to hopefully come up with something that would be viable for the push assist board. The big flaw with this design was it mandated a, uh, a type of motor that is not going to have as much torque. But this use case doesn't need as much torque, uh, but it's still up in the air as to whether that would be appropriate or not. So this truck concept was a couple of videos back. I'll probably put up a tag. But yes, yeah, so what I was going for with this was pushing towards this uh, push assist idea. So anyway, I don't have the means to uh, execute this idea, but I did want to contribute to the discussion and get this uh, get this all out there and get more people thinking about it. So there we go. Longboard technology over and out. One thing I want to bring up is I still have a bunch of brain cleaners to sell. So I had, I don't know, like 13 people lined up for the eight boards, but a bunch of people had to drop out and I ended up selling only three out of all the people who emailed me. So what I have left is a interceptor with purple trucks, 
an interceptor with green trucks. And I've got two interceptors with green trucks. Uh, and I've got the Blem interceptor with purple trucks and the blue board that is blue top and bottom. So if you're interested in these boards, you can go ahead and email me. I'll just put the email on screen. So one more thing is I'm going to see if I can get my hands on a bunch of the base plates. There's supposed to be a bunch left over that other planet had in stock that they never got rid of. And it might be possible for me to make my own hangers and have a bunch more trucks to sell. And um, a lot of the people I feel who are wanting to get the brain cleaners really just wanted the chance to get on some trucks. So if, if you're in that category, then, then stay tuned and I'll see if I might be able to round up a couple more trucks to sell. And I'll, I'll just do those standalone. So there you go. Lumber technology over and out again.